everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another Witch Wednesdays and as it turns out I had missed a tier list when I was doing my, my witch uh, tier lists from the witch community. I didn't realise that there was also a villains tier, ma uh, villains tier list maker which I completely missed out which covers all the major villains from the witch comics and TV show so I figured I might as well do that one too. I love a tier list, what can I say? I have a tier list addiction. It's so funny because like when I was younger I remember I used to make ranking lists all the time just in notebooks and like I always thought it was so weird. I was like why am I like this? Why do I need to rank everything? Why do I have to put things in orders? I don't know why that is. And then when I got older I discovered this website and I was like oh so like it's not just me. There's like a lot of people out there who enjoy making ranking lists for some reason. Putting things in, in orders and tiers. I was like oh good it's not just me. It's not some kind of weird quirk that I've got. We're all like that. It's it's nice to know. What does my Norton want? Go away. Okay, so these are all the major villains from the comments and TV show. We've got a whole bunch of them here. We've got more characters in this list than we have in any of the previous lists. So this should be interesting. So let's just get into it. We have our tiers. These are the tiers that have been given to us. And I think they're pretty good. It's a pretty good range in my opinion. We have... At the top we have an icon, a boss, and an absolute legend. Then we have a great slash fun villain. Mixed feelings, just annoying, shouldn't exist at all, or who even is that? So I'm hoping I don't need to put anyone on who even is that. I'm hoping I know everyone. Um, But yeah, I think that's pretty much sums it up. That, that, these are pretty good tiers. Um, I think great fun villain is a good tier because like sometimes you get a villain it's like they're not maybe like the most clever villain they maybe don't have the best schemes but they're just like fun they're just like enjoying to watch. Who's that one villain from Generator Rex? It's the one that's voiced by Greg Ellis um, and he's like he's not really the best villain in the world but he's so fun that I loved every episode that he was in. But his name doesn't his name escapes me now. But you know what I mean? Just sometimes you get a villain and it's like they're not they're not maybe the best at what they do, but they're super fun. Okay, so let's get started. So the first one we have here is Aria of Acanta. Um I never know like the funny the thing about Witch is that like any character that exists post season two or world or phrase or anything, I don't know the official pronunciation. We were just having a conversation recently about the pronunciation of Orub. Because I've always pronounced it Oru, but it turns out most people pronounce it Orube. Never occurred to me to pronounce it that way. I've always just read it as Oru. Um, like Froob, you know, like like the yogurt, Froobs. Um, and Ari, like, I've always wondered, like, is it meant to be like Ari or like Arai? Ari? I don't know, but I always say Ari. So anyway, Ari of Arcanto shouldn't exist at all. He is the one I discussed at length in my arc ranking because he basically tears the universe apart because his son has autism. And we don't stand. We don't stand someone who thinks that autism is something to be cured because it's not. It's just it's just something that's part of who you are and you learn how to navigate that, you know? We all come in different shapes and sizes. We all have our differences and it's just part of autism is just a part of who people are people who have it it's just part of their their life it's not something to be cured um but uh, Ari decided that he would go to the oracle and be like yo make my son talk because he's non-verbal and oracle was like mm, not really my problem and Ari was like okay well I'm going to enslave a woman make her give me a castle and then just tear the universe apart because my son won't speak words Instead of just learning a different way to communicate with my child. Like, learn Makaton or something. Like, something. But no, he's like, no. I'm going to just trap a woman in my basement. Make her give me a castle. Make her give me everything I've ever wanted. And then moan because my child still isn't speaking. As if that's how that works. As if children's ability to speak comes from the material wealth that they have. Terrible guy. Just, just a piece of shit. We hate him. He has cool hair though, admittedly. But piece of shit. The Grumper Sisters. I'm going to say mixed feelings for both because that's them comics and show. Because 
Well, hmm. Actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the comet ones in Just Annoying and the Max, the TV show ones in Max Fields. Because I feel like the TV show ones are more like... I don't know, they come across more as like... Like, they want to run a gossip column. They're more kind of just a bit vapid. But they don't seem outright bullyish, whereas in the comics they are like just really mean and just shitty to everyone. I mean, they team up with Alchemy in the show to make Alchemy and the Grumpers. And they work at the radio station, they work in the school newspaper. They are... They don't seem to be horrible. They are... There is that one bit where they're, like, really mean about what Cornelia's wearing. But, like... I mean, I can't sit here and pretend that I didn't talk trash about girls at school. Like, <laughs> didn't we all? <laughs> didn't we all? We've all met people in life that we don't like and we trash talk them when, they, when you don't think they're around. So... I feel like like they are still not the best. Like they're still mean, annoying girls. But I've I've more mixed on them in the show. But I think in the comics they just I just didn't really like them. So just annoying. Okay, comic Cedric. Um, I mean I think ultimately Cedric is a great villain. Like I don't like him, but I think he is a great villain. Um, he is quite sinister he does give me the creeps in the early arcs and he does try to have a redemption arc sort of, I don't really feel like it was a redemption arc, I don't really think he redeemed himself at all, but he's definitely an interesting character Um, and I think he is a, a good villain overall but I don't like him but he's still a great villain <laughs> TV Cedric great villain. He is. He is. I mean, Cedric has the kind of primary villain of season one. Like, Phobos is the man behind the curtain. He's the one that's controlling everything. But Cedric is the one that they're actively fighting on a week-to-week -week basis. And he's... He's very iconic. Big, big snake man. Who just seems to get bigger depending on how they want him to be in any episode like i swear to god his size changes depending on the situation he's always a different size <laughs> he's got he's like this like infinitely expanding snake man um but he is iconic and he is funny there's like i've said this i said this in the um the cartoon ranking that like the way that d bradley baker delivers cedric's lines there's just something really funny about it. Like, he's just enjoyable to watch. And he's so... He's so particularly sinister in the show because there's that whole thing of him luring Elyon away from her friends. Whereas in the comics, we don't see how that played out. We just see him meeting her at the party and then she turns on them. But we don't actually see how he manipulates her, how he got her away, really. Um, I can't remember if that was in a flashback or something at any point. Something's telling me that there was. But my point is we don't get the same understanding as we do in the show. Whereas in the show, we see like big chunk of like the first half of season one is taken up by Cedric trying to lure her away. And he like gives her a job at the bookstore and he's sort of playing on her mind and making her realise that, you know, her friends don't spend time with her and you know, her family are lying to her, that they won't tell her the truth, that she can only trust him. And it's such a, a like, textbook definition of grooming. That way where you, you take someone who's much younger than you, you isolate them from their friends, isolate them from their family, make them believe that no one else understands them, that everyone else is the enemy and it's you and them against the world. It, that's exactly what he does to her. And then, so when he turns around and he's like, you're Princess of Meridian, come with me. She chooses to leave because he has completely brainwashed her against everyone she knows. And unfortunately, her friends and her family can't really do anything to, to, to fix it because they have been lying to her for her own good, but they were lying to her. So they don't really have any defense. And it's just so twisted, but it's so well done, so well written. I love Cedric. And the fact that he swallowed Phobos whole to steal his power is just one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Like, every time I see that, it just sends me. It's the funniest thing. He swallowed Phobos whole. That is hilarious. <laughs> that, 
That is a high art. That is peak comedy. So we have to stand. We have to stand TV show Cedric because we do. <laughs> we do. Okay, Dark Mother. That's who that is, right? That's Dark Mother. What's her name? Meter? Right, she sucks. So, um, like, in theory, in concept, in idea, clever character, very powerful, elemental queens. She's, like, supposed to be, like, Demeter, the Greek, Roman, Greek, Greek goddess of spring. I get so... I love mythology, but God, I get my Greek and Roman gods mixed up so much. Anyway, the goddess of, like, spring... Uh, wait. Goddess of Spring is Persephone. Christ, I don't know. Point is, there was a whole story about, like, the elemental queens and the queens of, like, the seasons and all that stuff. It was, like, the fucking maidens from Ruby. But, 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 in practice, she kind of sucked. And the arc sucked. And arc seven is the worst arc. So, I mean, what am I supposed to say? Shouldn't exist at all. She sucks. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like you could do a lot more with her. I feel like you could have- I feel like if, if they tried to adapt her story into the TV show, they probably could have done something to kind of rewrite her and fix her a bit. I feel like Dark Mother is a character that could be fixed in a rewrite, but in the actual version we got, no. This is Carl Ibsen, right? I think. It's been a- no, 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 no. That's Edward Faulkner. From Arc 6. He's the Ragerlang capturer. Ragerlang hunter. I could not think of the word. Uh, um, God, this is difficult. Um, <laughs> uh... I'm debating between mixed feelings and just annoying because I don't think he's a particularly good character but I like Arc 6 and I like the role that he plays even though I don't like his character that much. I'm going to say mixed feelings then. I'm going to say mixed feelings just purely because I am an Arc 6 truther. TV show Elyon. I'm going to say a great fun villain because... I don't really think she is a villain in the TV show. The comic books, yes. But in the TV show, she never really was villainous. She didn't actively attack the girls the way that she did in the comic. Anytime she was attacking them, she believed she was doing it in self-defense or in defense of Phobos, Cedric, the palace, her world, etc. Whereas in the comic, she was like deliberately going to Earth and like attacking them. And we'll talk about that in a second when we move on to comic Elyon. Um, but, like, in the show, she wasn't, she wasn't, like, ever really actively villainous. So, like, I don't think she, I don't really think she is a great villain, because I don't think she's a villain. But she's Elyon, and I love Elyon, so I'm going to put her in this tier purely on the basis of being Elyon. But I don't really see her as a villain in the show. Um, I don't think she ever did anything that was villainous. She was very, very confused. Um and everything that she did she thought she was doing for the good of meridian because she thought that they that the guardians were the villains and that she was defending her world she didn't realize the situation that she was in so she wasn't really a villain she was just very 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 misguided by the people who were actively lying and manipulating her whereas in the comics she is an icon a boss and an absolute legend um, I think Elyon's a great villain in the comics. Um, she is really, really messed up in the first part of Arc 1. And it's very enjoyable. <laughs> like, she is probably one of the best villains when she's still a villain. But of course, once we get out of the original six issues that were written by the original creators and we get into Arc um, Issue 7, which was written after the original creators left the series, um, amid the whole drama that's when it turns so in illusions and lies she's like deliberately went to earth she's shape-shifted into an older form of herself she's pretending to be vera wells uh swim teacher so that she can get into her life and like 
attack her and keep tabs on her and all this stuff. It's very twisted, very evil. And then literally in the very next issue, she's talking to Cedric and she's like, I kind of feel bad about it. <laughs> it's like, no. And it's because they changed. She was never meant to become good in the original version of the story. And if the original creators had been allowed to continue arc one, she would have continued to be a villain for the rest of the series. She would never have, have turned around and become good. And while I'm, I like that she did, and I love her character and I'm glad that she did, I also would have really liked to see the version where she stayed evil because I really enjoyed her as a villain. But she only really was a villain for the first six issues and then they changed the story and put her on the path to redeem redeeming herself and and overthrowing Phobos and stuff. Uh but when she was evil, she was very evil. And it was it was rather iconic. Okay, it looks like we've only got like Ember and Kor and um is tried art here tried art in their tv show forms rather than their comic forms which is pretty fair because the knights of destruction other than shagon didn't really get a lot of characterization in the comics so i think that's probably fair ember i'm gonna say a great fun villain i like ember she's she's voiced by kree summer which is iconic in itself and she's just kind of that that type of villain that's always kind of mocking the girls. And it's enjoyable. She's just, she's, she's that bitch. Ember is that bitch. That's all I have to say, really. Erin. I don't really see Erin as a villain either because she was being manipulated by Tekla. Um, and she thought the girls were her enemy when they weren't. But as a character, like, I like Erin. So I'm going to, the same as Elion, I'm going to put her in great fun villain. But it's not that I think she's a great villain. It's just that I like her as a character. I don't really see Erin as villainous because she was being tricked um, into attacking the girls when actually the girls were willing to help her. So she wasn't she wasn't a villain, but I like her as a character. I, I always liked Erin. Frost in the TV show. Um no offense to Frost, but Frost is probably my least favourite character in the entire show. Like if you actually ask me. Like there aren't really characters in the TV show that I don't like. I like pretty much everyone, but Frost is probably my least favourite. Uh, he's a, he's not really a very enjoyable villain. He's just kind of annoying. Um, yeah, I just don't really care about Frost. I don't think he's a particularly interesting villain. He doesn't have a lot of personality. And he basically just shows up and goes like... Rawr. And he's the v main villain of A is for Anonymous, which I don't... It's my least favourite episode. And I don't... I still, after all these years, could not tell you what the plot of that episode's meant to be. Like, he follows Tarani to school pretending to be a bald man and then traps all the girls in a bubble. Like, what is the point? What is the plot of that episode? I literally will never be able to tell you what the plot is of A's for Anonymous. It's all over the shop. Sorry to Greg Wiseman, but what was going on in that episode? <laughs> Don't know. But he's the main villain and he sucked in it. So, Frost in the comics... I'm going to say mixed feelings because like I don't love him but he's definitely a lot better in the comics. He's scarier. Um, he feels like more of a threat. Uh, and he's less annoying. But he's still not like my fave. I'm not going to rank him as like a great villain because I don't think he's I don't think he is. But he's better. Gargoyle, I'm going to say great. I actually, I really like Gargoyle as a character. Gargoyle can't speak but you get quite a lot of personality from him just from the way that he acts. And I just really like him. And of course, he was one of the, the villains who turned at the end of the series and joined the Guardians. He he was one of the ones who decided that he was loyal to Raythor and that he was going to follow what Raythor wanted to do. So we love to see it. We love to see a big rock monster who chooses the path of good. So I like Gargoyle. This is Cornelia's grandmother, right? That's who that is. Yeah, so um, shouldn't exist at all. Uh, she's awful. 
and she just she's just always so rude. She's so hostile to Cornelia. And then I'm pretty sure if I remember right, she's like really insulting with about Cornelia's relationship with Peter, which feels racist. <laughs> feels racist. Uh so no, we don't stand horrible, nasty, racist grandmother. No. Bye. Bye, Grandmother Hale. This is Tekla. Um Mixed feelings as well for Tekla because again, like I really enjoy Arc Six and I like that Tekla has like a motivation for being evil that's more than just I want to rule the world. It's like I need to steal the souls of the youth so that I can stay young because I don't want to get old. It's not a great motive, it's very shallow, but it's a motive all the same that's more than just I want to be evil because I want to be evil. Uh so I appreciate her, but like she's not the best villain in the world um so uh, yeah mixed feelings and carl uh probably the same carl is i would say carl is a villain but he sort of just goes along with whatever tecla does because she's his wife he's just um he's 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 just a very loyal husband even when his wife's decided that she's going to be evil and steal like the souls of children <laughs> he's like well Gotta stand by your woman, so I mean we stand a supportive, loyal, dedicated husband. Just maybe dial it back a bit when your wife is stealing souls. <laughs> maybe you need to reconsider your choices at that point, girl. Jeek! Jeek! Jeek's great. Like he's a passling. I am the biggest stand for passlings. I love all the passlings. You could show me a passling serial killer and I would probably still be like, I love it. I am such a stan for passlings. Jake sucks because like he's rude to Blunk and he like frames Blunk for stealing the heart of Kanja Car. But he's just a stinky little shit. Like I love him. I love him. He's just an evil stinky little shit. He's just out here committing crimes and being a pest and I love him for it. I love Jake. Thief Jake. Thief Jake. Um Valtor, I mean, um, Ludmore. Uh... Mixed feelings. Like, Arc 5 is very boring, in my opinion. Arc 5 is so meh. Um, and he's the main villain, so clearly not the best villain in the world otherwise i would like have stronger feelings towards art five the fact that it's so man boring suggests that he was just a very man boring villain but to be quite honest i can't remember much about him like all i remember is he's like an alchemist he's like phobos's alchemist who like got sent to earth because they had a fallout or something and then he lives in a spooky house on a hill outside heatherfield and that's about pretty much all I can remember and he has his magic book that Matt, Matt gets trapped in. Um, so like, yeah, I just don't, I just don't remember enough about him to really give you a particular definition of, of what I think of him because that, <laughs> that arc is just very mediocre and I can't remember. I don't actively feel either way about him. I just don't really remember what, what I think of Ludmore. Oh well. I would say I need to reread re Art 5, but I don't really want to, to be quite honest. Kor. So, Kor is... Um, Kor is great. Because Kor is Mr. Huggles. And as much as he's, like, evil, he basically, he's still, at his core, like, pet. And he just does whatever Shagon tells him. So then when Shagon reverts back to being Matt, like, Kor still listens to him because Kor as Kor is still Mr. Huggles. So we love we love him. And I mean, look at his design. He's so cool. And he has a habit of, like, always attacking Cornelia. So we stan his choice in Guardian. If you ever know, like, if you actually look through the amount of times... The Cor and Cornelia, or Cor and Caleb, or Cor, Cornelia and Caleb are in a battle scene together. Is it, it keeps happening? Like Cor particularly targets those two, and to be fair, they're usually together. But like he always targets them, 
I don't know why that is, but there's like a genuine thing where it's always them. So maybe I'm just more attached to him because he keeps appearing in the scenes that I'm paying more attention to. Who is this? Who is that? Oh no, don't make me put it in who even is that. Who is that? Who is that? I straight up don't know who that is. Wow. No, no. I, mm. I was going to say, like, is it comic tried art? But I can't think why it would be because we don't have comic ember or comic core in the list. So I don't see why we would have comic tried art. Although it does kind of look like him. Okay, I just googled and Google doesn't even have a picture of Tridar in the comic for me to compare it to. So I don't know who that is. So I'm sorry. These are the fucking ladies and they are all going into shouldn't even exist. I hate the ladies so much. I hate that whole arc. It just is so bad. One of them is a literal transformer. Lady Crash, the queen of cars. Lady Crash, Lady Giga. Lady Giga. She's like a controls energy or something i don't fucking know she's lady gaga and lady chemical chemical who controls something i don't know i don't even care i don't even care they're awful i hate the ladies <laughs> right moving on nihila um so she's like as you can see like an egyptian queen she's got like nefertiti vibes um Mixed feelings because she is an Arc 9 villain, which automatically makes her bad because Arc 9 is nonsense. However, I think the concept behind Nyla is very good. She has the limb of fate from Greek mythology and she can weave everyone's fates with the loom, which makes her like one of the most powerful characters in the entire canon because she can literally control fate with her loom. And, like, as a librarian span, the librarians and the loom of fate is a fantastic episode. Um, I, I just appreciate the usage of that mythology there. But, and oh, also she has nails that can literally kill a man. She has the sharpest nails. She can rip your head off with them, which is iconic. We have to stand. She also has a great design. She looks rad as fuck. Um, but... But it's arc nine, so it's not as if she gets a proper storyline. She gets she appears like what twice or something because arc nine. So mixed feelings because she could have been a lot better. She's a great idea if they'd actually used her for a storyline instead of putting her into an arc where there's no plot. So Liam, the man who turns up naked in Halen's closet. <laughs> <sighs> Ugh, probably mixed feelings as well for Liam. He's definitely one of the better one of the better parts of Arc Eight. Arc Eight is not my favorite. However, Liam is probably one of the better aspects of it. So, and again, not entirely a villain. Like he's just trying to save his girlfriend. So. You know, we have to stand. However, I mean, we don't stand the fact that he was naked in Halen's closet. What were the writers doing? Like, why did they do that? I remember the first time I read that, I was just like, what am I seeing? Why is there a naked man in Halen's closet? She's like 13, 14 years old. I'm traumatized. I'm scarred for life. Um, But yeah, he's definitely one of the better aspects of a really bad arc. Luba. No offence, but I hate Luba. I know I'm voicing her in the fan dub, but I hate Luba. She's awful. I'm not putting her in shouldn't exist at all because she has a purpose. She is part of Kanja Carr. She's very pivotal to the whole Caleb as a flower arc. But she sucks. She's horrible. She's rude. She doesn't believe in the girls. She tries to break up Cornelia and Caleb, which, fairness, they deserved. But, like, not for the reasons that she was doing it. Like, if she tried to break them up because they were a terrible couple that shouldn't have existed, that would have been one thing. But no, she tries to break them up because she's like, he's a whisperer, we can't murmur or whatever. 
we can't trust him and the oracle's like or we could see maybe if we can trust him and not just judge people on their backstory and Luba's like no <laughs> she's awful I hate her I hate Luba Medina and McTinan. I'm gonna give them great fun villains I mean they're literally the, the they're Interpol and they're like no, no, like, I want to see, like, the adventures of Medina and Matina, and I want them to have, they should have got their own special. They should have got their own special where they investigate crimes. They should have. I like them. I like Medina and Matina. I'm ranking them high. Miranda, Miranda, the Spider Queen. I went on and on and on about, in my cartoon ranking about how much I love Miranda. She's an icon. Um, She's a creepy little spy girl girl. She's funny and mischievous and creepy and she deliberately tries to wind up the guardians like that bit where she, she like makes Caleb like hold her hand and she's like see isn't it better when we just all get along she's so twisted I love her a queen a queen Nerissa the love of my life mother Nerissa is an icon of Austin, an absolute legend. I love that woman so much. I already went on about this in my cartoon ranking, but like, I am such a stan for Nerissa. She's such a good villain because she has played the long game. She's been plotting her schemes for like going on two decades by the time that the show comes around. She deliberately like took on two completely separate jobs, pretending to be other people just so she could gather intel and like wait out and hiding until she could put her plan in motion once Phobos was overthrown. She uses the girls' like personal lives against them, which is something Phobos never did. He was basically just like sending various monsters at them to kill them, whereas Nerissa was deliberately trying to wear them down, wear down their psyche, break their spirit. You know, she's in their dreams. She's glamouring herself as the other girls to turn them against each other. She took Matt and turned him into Shagon just so that Will would like have a breakdown. So then Shagon would like continually mock Will which would just destroy her spirit because she wanted to use her. She wanted to get the heart off her. She gets the former guardians and she uses the chink in the armour of their soul. She finds their greatest weakness. Uses that to enthrall them. She is a genius like this woman schemes and the fact that the girls never actually beat her like I think that's important to point out is that she was not beaten by the guardians they had to get Phobos in to use like <laughs> basically to use a loophole and the fact that he's the only one that can take back the heart of Meridian because of birthright that's the only reason they beat Nerissa. And then at the end, they trapped her in an illusion world. Basically, I think, because they knew fine well they couldn't stop her. She's too powerful and she's too clever and she's always one step ahead and they couldn't beat her. So they had to just give her a dream world because the only way to ever stop her was to give her exactly what she wants. So they put her into an illusion world where she got everything she'd ever wanted, meaning that she would never try and escape. And she was just left in there. And I'm like, you know what? That's the best end for her because A, my queen is happy forever and B, no one else has to get hurt because none of it's real. So she got to be happy. She got the life she'd always wanted and everybody else got to be free. Perfect. Love her. Love Nerissa. The queen of everything. Comic Nerissa is also an icon of Austin, an absolute legend for similar reasons and that she's very sinister. She's very twisted. She uses the girls' personal lives against them. She almost like pretends to be Matt so that Will will, like, confess her secret to her and then, like, steals the heart from her. And she does actually steal the heart. Like, she gets the heart off of Will and they can't, the Guardians can't transform. She creates that whole illusion world where she makes them believe that Kandrakar is gone and they all start forgetting about who they are. She's very twisted, very evil, very clever. She haunts them in their dreams so that they're afraid to go to sleep. She's a very clever villain. I like her and I like her connection to the story, the fact that she was a former guardian, her hatred of Kandrakar. She has a far more interesting reason to be evil than most other characters in the series and in my opinion she is the best villain in the comic. Even though she's nothing, she, even though she's very different from her, not nothing alike, but she's very different from her TV show version, I still really like her. I like them both for who they are separately. 
That's right here. That's... Is that not the King of Sharks? Orister. It is! Wow, I'm so... God, I'm so deep in this fucking fandom. How on earth did I pull that out of my ass? Okay. Orister. Um, shouldn't exist at all. The whole... That was a terrible, terrible issue. And it's like, they have to save the... the what? What is the fucking plot again? He plotted to marry Marive, who was the daughter and true heir of the Starfish King. Unfortunately, the princess was able to escape by living in the land in immortal guise. He's the king of sharks and he wanted to marry the daughter of the Starfish King. Like, what? How are these words that I'm saying? How are these words that I'm actually speaking with my mouth? I do. <laughs> The King of Sharks wanted to marry the daughter of the Starfish King. Shut up. Awful. Shouldn't exist. Phobos, an icon of boss and an absolute legend. Because of course, I know I trashed him in my comment. I actually feel kind of bad. I feel like I ranked him too low in my comment video. I don't think he's the best villain in the world because um, he doesn't really do a huge amount in Arc 1. However, he does a lot in Arc 4 and he's very iconic in Arc 4 when he pretends to be in Darno, which is pretty impressive. Um, I still don't think he's the most like interesting character in the world, but he's a very good villain. He's very evil. Um, he had a very good master plan. And at the end of Arc 4, he gets so sick of being beaten by teenage girls that he eats himself into oblivion. And that's just iconic. That's that's icon behaviour. And he's a queen. Like, look at him. Queen. Phobos in the show, also an icon of Boston, an absolute legend. Um, TV show Phobos is literally iconic. He is hilarious. He is just, like, my boy Barry from Friends is just chewing the scenery. He is just just chewing it like like a, like a woodlouse. Um, and I mean, look at his eyeliner. Look at his hair. Look at his fat. He is iconic. He's everything. He is the moment. We love Phobos. What more is there to say? Like, just watch the show. You'll see how iconic he is. Raythor! Raythor is um, great because I love him. Um, as a villain, he is basically just like an angry man. But I don't care. I love Raythor and I'm putting him in great because I think he is great. So <laughs> I'm not justifying it. That's just who... That's That's just how it is. Mr. Riddle, um, just annoying, probably. I don't think he, I don't think he's bad enough to go and shouldn't exist at all. The idea of having this like institute that researches like magic is certainly interesting. I find that very hard to adapt into my version of season three. It has broken my brain so many times, but I think it's an interesting idea if you can make it work. I'm not entirely sure the comics did, but. An interesting idea, but he's annoying. He's an annoying character and he's going in just annoying. The Runics, I have mixed feelings about. I like the concept. They're one of the only, like, decent parts of Arc 9. 9? I think 9. Uh, and my boy Nashter is there and I love Nashter. But all the other Runics are basically just, like, there to be there. But they're kind of cool. They're kind of interesting. And people always talked about, like, what if there was guardians but they were boys? And it's like, well, yeah, the runics, basically. Sandpit! Sandpit. I love Sandpit. Sandpit also turned at the end and became good, and we love to see it. And, um, I mean, he's a giant moving sand monster. What's not to love? Iconic. I love Sandpit. And, and you can make, you can turn them into glass by heating them up. Iconic. Shagon, an icon of Boston, an absolute legend. Shagon is like the most evil, twisted piece of shit. He is so horrible. He is so evil. He gets right into your head. He is just the worst. He is so hateable and it's so enjoyable. He is so good at it. You, It's like, I want to punch him in the face. But also, I love him and I can't get enough of him. He is, he is the moment. He is everything. I love Shagon. 
what a guy. What a guy. Obviously, it's a shame that to get Shagon, I had to give up one of my other favourite characters, my boy Matt. But, what can you do? Shagon was iconic. Shagon in the comics is, uh, I would say, probably great. Like, he is still very scary, very evil. Um, but he's got nothing on TV show. TV show Shagon. My brain is refusing to generate words. But, like, he's still a good villain in the comics. He's just not as good as TV show Cedric. Raphael Sella. I'm gonna say mixed feelings. Because, like, he's a cool dude. He's, like, a cool teacher dude. But, of course, he's also, like, working for, like, Mr. Riddle and, like, the Interpol people. But he's not, like, that much of a villain. He's a decent guy on the whole. So, I like him. I don't really see Medina and Mateenan as villains either, because they're just doing their jobs. They work for Interpol and there's weird shit going on and they need to investigate it. Like, they are the X-Files, so <laughs> can't really be mad at them for doing their jobs. This one here is Takeda. Hmm. Probably mixed feelings on Takeda as well, because... Again, he's definitely the best part. Like, his storyline is the best part of Arc 8. Um, and he is basically only doing... He is only a villain because he's trying to save his daughter. So, you can't really be mad at him. Like, you, you gotta do what you gotta do if your family's in trouble, you know? Um, but at the same time, he's not, like, the most enjoyable villain in the world. So, mixed feelings because he's not, like, that interesting. But I can also respect his motives. So... Thomas Fandom shouldn't exist. Like, obviously he needs to exist in order to, like, be the reason that Will exists since she's his daughter. But after she was born, he no longer needed to exist. He'd served his purpose and he could have left. He's a terrible father. He's just hideous. You should not be getting people to, like, spy on your ex-wife and trying to, like, make up lies about her so that you can try and take back custody of your daughter. If you don't have custody of your daughter, there's maybe a reason for it. Maybe it's because you're a dickhead. Um, Thomas Fandom is the absolute worst. I would say he has, like, one of the worst. Like, he's, like, in terms of evilness, he is, like, one of the most evil characters in the series and he's not even, like, magical. He's just a piece of shit. And it's, like, one of the- I suppose he is kind of the definition of, like, sometimes the monsters are us. Like, sometimes the, the worst monsters are just other human beings. Because he is basically a monster. Um, even though he's not a, a magical villain. He's just a really shit father. We hate him. The tracker. I'm going to say great, but with the caveat that I still think that it would be more interesting if we had any kind of backstory about who the tracker is, like I said in my other video. But, like, he is definitely very cool. Like, he looks super cool. He's got the kind of most creepy design out of everyone in the show. He has a dog, and we love dogs. I love dogs. So we stand. A man who loves dogs. Uh, he has a really big chain that glows. And if he opens up his belly, bats fly out. So, I mean, what's not to love, really? <laughs> what's not to love? And he's wearing, like, some kind of witch's hat. Like, there's just so much going on with this man. He's a skeleton. He has a witch's hat. He has bats in his stomach. And he has a dog and a giant glowing chain. Like, there's just, there's just so much going on. What a guy. Try dark. I'm gonna say great but on the lower end like I do like Tridar and I think he's fun he feeds on despair which is metal as fuck um, he's not like the most interesting character in the world but I do like him and he does still manage to be like really mocking like that time when he has Cornelia and he's like, even the prettiest flower can get brittle and likely to snap. Um, and it's like, yo, dude, coming out here with the burns, ironically, since he's made of ice. Yeah, I like Tridar. Okay, Uriah and his goons from the comics, I would say, are just annoying. Um, they are just always causing trouble. And, like, they are criminals. Like, they blew up, they put fireworks in the pumpkin in the first issue and, like, almost set fire to the school. 
like there's a difference between being like a jokester prankster and like trying to shove a frog in Cornelia's face in the middle of science class and like arson. There's a difference. So I don't really like them in the comic. However, in the TV show, I think they're a lot of fun. I like Uriah and I do think that they are not as evil uh, or like as bad bullies in the show. I think they are mostly just a group of silly boys being silly boys. And I'm not saying boys should be boys, but they're just silly boys being silly, doing silly things, playing pranks and annoying people. And they don't really seem to cause that much trouble. They're just like a general annoyance. And I mean, we've all went to school with people like that who are just like an irritant, but they're not, they're not like destined for jail. They're just irritating. Vathic. I mean, Comet Vathic is an icon of Boston, an absolute legend. Like, we, I love Comet Vathic so much. He he's great. He's great. Like and he's usually not a villain. Like he's only a villain for a short period of time. But he's like scary, but also kind of sweet, even as a villain. And then he reforms and becomes a good guy. And he's always got his scarf on. He's such a fashion forward guy. And he's this adorable face. Look at his big blue face. These big big round jaw. I I love him. I love Vathic. White Queen, um, I mean, she has that kind of clown marionette look about her, which I just hate as an aesthetic. I hate clowns and marionette dolls, so that's a downside. I don't like Arc 8. I'm going to say she's just annoying. I'm sorry, I just don't really care about White Queen. I don't think she's that exciting. I just don't, I don't give a shit about White Queen, honestly. Uh, sorry. Sorry to this woman. You are... Um, again, I don't know. Is that how everyone pronounces her name? It's how I pronounce her name. I think Yua is great. I really like her. She, again, she's not really a villain because... Or at least not for the most part. She's literally enslaved by this fucker over here. And forced to grant wishes for him and his non-verbal child that he won't accept. And it's not really surprising that when she gets, like, finally gets free, that she's like, I'm gonna destroy everything. Because I would be pretty pissed off too if I'd been locked in someone's basement, basically. And forced to do shit for him. Like, I would also be mad. But she is a good person at her soul and she does genuinely care about Maki. And she's got green hair. She's got bright green hair. Her design is so cool. Green is one of my favourite colours. She looks fucking awesome. I really like Yua. One of my greatest sadnesses is the fact that we never got to see her on the TV show. Because she would have looked so cool in the show. But we never got her. And I weep. But yeah, so that's my final tier. Um... And, uh, yeah, only one of them whom I can't think who it is. Everyone else I have, I have judged. And, I mean, it's pretty, I think, you know, we've got quite a lot on each row. Pretty, pretty nice balance. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. And, um, yeah. So, I will sign off now. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on your favourite and least favourite witch villains. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.